Hello, good day and welcome back to Go Lang on the Run. My name is Varel Adams and in this video, I'll be showing you how to encode comma separated value in Go. Let's jump in. So here I am on the Golang website and if I click on packages, then scroll down to encoding and on the encoding, I'll see comma separated value CSV. XML and JSON are very popular on the web and very popular today. You might still run into a situation where either new tools or old applications still generate data in common separated value, or you might need to generate common separated value to feed into some older application or tool. So it's worthwhile to spend some time doing this. Now, I've decided to break this part about encoding and decoding in common separated value into two videos. In this video, we're going to focus on just encoding only. And in the next video, I'll walk, look at decoding and you'll see why when we get to that video, at least. So I'm going to jump to my command line. I'm in my directory of go on the run, and I'm going to make a directory for common separate value encoding because that's all we're going to focus on in this video. And this is the directory. I only have the files and directories that we worked on previously. What I'll, I'll do is open up my code editor now. And so, um, these are some of the old code. I'm going to close all of these because we don't need those right now. And in my com separate value encoding thing, I'm going to do main that go. And then of course this is package main and then func main. All right. So what do I want to do? Well, let's think about what a comma separated encoded file look like. So let's just sort of create that empty file here and we'll try and create a simple one by hand. So this is our test that comma separated value file and uh, hmm, sure, why not? Search your marketplace and Excel viewer rainbow. Comma, oh, why not? Let's install this. Uh, okay. Reload. That's nice and helpful. And I'm going to go back here. And let's now start having files. So let's say I have some data. I want to store information about user. So each user have an ID, let's say, comma, and they have first name and last name. You know, we'll do it like that. Age maybe, and let's say username, email, like before, password. Okay. So let's say we want to store that sort of information. And notice how this um, plugin is allowing me to highlight those colorize those fields. So that's, that's super sweet. So this is a comma separated file. It's just using comma to delimit the fields. And this is called the header, um, the first line, and it's optional. So your file may or may not include it, but it's good to at least include an error. So someone else who's reading your comma separated value file have an idea of what the different fields are, but you notice a problem immediately. What if my password actually contained a comma. So my password, my comma password, right? As you can see, there's a problem. It's seeing my as the field for password and then password as some other field that we haven't really defined, right? If we had defined another field here, not a field that would have been this one that matches up with password. So I really want the password to contain a comma. So in that case, we have to use double quotes. So we have to quote this field and now we can embed a comma or multiple comma within it. And that's not a problem because this field is now quoted. So now you can see this is being displayed correctly now. So you can use quotes around any field. And you don't have to wait until you have something like an enclosed comma or something to quote a field. You can quote any field. So let's say I do a fourth record. So if you have a quoted field and you want to embed a quote within it, as you can see, this is showing up now as a separate thing. You have to use a double quote. So you have to do something like this. And so now that is showing up correctly. Common separated value formatted files can be a little bit of a pain to deal with. So now you don't have a choice thing. So that's my test data. So, so that's fine. All right. So let's now go back to our main application. And of course we can go to our help here and you can see examples. And so if you look here, there's this variable called parse error. 
there's a reader and a writer. Once you have a, you call a new writer, you have a writer, then you can invoke on that writer as a receiver for error, flush, write, and write all. Enough talking, let's sort of jump in and do this. So I want some data. So I'm gonna say, um, let's call it, let's create one record. And so let's call it user one, um, colon equals to, Okay, so I think that's correct, but the error I'm getting, the reason I'm getting an error, hopefully is not in how my strings are created, but rather because I haven't used it. And so if I do FMT, FMT that print line, and then I do user one. Oh, actually, I want a user. So this is users actually. Yep, this is why it's complaining. So I need to pull that out. And I need to say user two. Okay, user four is equal to that. This is user three. And I have a slice of string. And let's do this. I'll save it. And I think that should be it. And so user three, user four. All right. So hopefully. Um, Let's see what else is it complaining about? Oh, well, because I have my comma, my closing thing on the next line, it needs this line to end in a comma. Okay. So if I want to get rid of that error, I can do this and then put this at the end like this. And then that should be fine if I save. All right. So up to you how you want to do it. I like how this look, this sort of looks. So I'll do it this way. And user two and three. Okay. Um, why is this complaining now? undefined user for ah there we go cool all right finally and so i run this and of course no surprise this is what i get now let's encode this and so i'm gonna say comma separate value that new writer i want a writer and if i do this it says it's need a some place to write to so i'm gonna say i'm gonna give it a file well actually let's start off by giving it os that's studio out and so that's a IO writer. You can write out to the standard out. And then I'm gonna say, um, let's save our writer somewhere. So W equals, and let's see, oh, all this return is one parameter. So I can say W dot write, and I'm gonna write my value user three. Then I'll do W dot write user four. All right, and this returns an error, but for here, I'm gonna ignore it. And remember what I said, one of the things you wanna do is you wanna flush. So colon equals uh, w dot flush, and actually flush doesn't return anything. I'm gonna say flush, and then I'm gonna say, let's check and see if there was an error when I was trying to flush the data out. So if, so if w that, if nil not equals to w dot error, then there was an uh, issue. So log, let's do fatal uh, ln, whatever the error is. Um, so w dot error, I'll just call and get back the error. That's poor thing. Really what I should have done was say error colon equals w dot error this way. And then I just you have to make one call instead of two this is better. But certainly um, not writing this, like I would write some code, I would test each one of those, but I'll do something else later that um, I'll show you how to make this better when you have multiple records to write. Okay. So this writes it out to our standard um, out and because that, standard out is by the operating system. We don't have to worry about closing it. And so this is all we need to do.